Hi everybody, my name is Rick and I was part of the CIS version 8 editorial panel and I've worked on previous control panels for years. This is the 14th in my video series going into a deep dive into the updates of each of the new controls. I have links to the videos for controls 1 through 13 in the description below as well as a link to the CIS critical security controls page to download your own copy to follow along at home. Today we're talking about control number 14, security awareness and skills training. Hmm. Security awareness and skills training is based on version 7, control 17, implement a security awareness and training program. So we have an easy one-to-one -one update for this one. Actually, these five, the, the next five controls that I'm going to be doing are pretty straightforward one-to-one -one updates, except for next week, which is a, um, a brand new control, which will be exciting. This control historically has been a mix of user training and awareness and security team skills training. We took out the skills training this time to better focus on just the, the training of the user base. Uh, workforce development, hiring, and talent acquisition may be a future control. You'll see that all but one of the safeguards apply to implementation group one organizations because these are not expensive to implement, they don't usually require technology, and are universal to all organizations. So let's look at the safeguards. So let me put uh, version eight on the left and version seven on the right. There are nine safeguards in control 14, the same as in version seven, but you'll see we, you'll see we changed a lot. Remember, we renamed the subcontrols to safeguards. We reorder the safeguards to align with the implementation groups. So 14.1, establish and maintain a security awareness program. This is a new control, similar to many that we've added in this version around developing a process or a program. And this rolls up some controls 17.3, implement security awareness program, and 17.4, update awareness content frequently. In 14.2, train workforce members to recognize social engineering attacks is a slight word change from 17.6, train workforce on identifying social engineering attacks. Pretty much the same. 14.3, train workforce members on authentication best practices is a reword of 17.5, train workforce on security authentication. 14.4, train workforce on data handling best practices is a reword of 17.7, train workforce on sensitive data handling. 14.5, train workforce members on causes of unintentional data exposure is the same as 17.8, train workforce on causes of unintentional data exposure. See, we're very similar here, you know, but what we we kind of added the word members in the title and we sometimes talk about best practices or we use the word recognize instead of identify, you know, again, to make it more clear. 14.6 train workforce members on recognizes and reporting security incidents is copied from 17.9 of the same name. 14.7 train workforce on how to identify and report if their enterprise assets are missing security updates is actually a new safeguard. And this is where we put more emphasis on asset configuration management in this version. 14.98 training workforce on dangers of connecting to and transmitting enterprise data over insecure networks is a new safeguard. We wanted to highlight the reality that we're more remote than ever nowadays. 14.9 conduct role-based specific security awareness and skills training is also a new safeguard. And it's related to the fact that different roles need different training topics such as administrators or executives or people who handle intellectual property or sensitive data. We retired subcontrol 17.1 performs a skills gap and analysis and 17.2 deliver training to fill skills gap because these are related to work workforce training, not end user awareness training. And those can be interpreted now those can be interpreted to assessing and delivering user training, but either way, they'll be rolled into 14.1 for developing the program. So before I go into more details on these safeguards, you're probably wondering, Rick. How come there's an efficient testing safeguard? Well, we talk about that in the narrative, but we felt it more important to put the safeguards, the outcomes of the efficient trading, not just to say, do phishing testing and check the box for the organization to do it. For instance, in 14.2, recognize social engineering attacks, or 14.5, training on the causes of intentional data exposure, or 14.6, recognize and reporting security incidents, or 14.9, role specific security training, all would be achieved through a good phishing testing program. So now that I've noted the changes, let's do a deeper dive and highlight these nine safeguards. I will, you know, put this one down and put up the details of it. And so 14.1, established security awareness program. We talk about some of the features of the training, specifically how to interact with assets and data in a secure manner and how it should be conducted and updated at least annually. We list a number of resources in the narrative um, to help develop the program, and I'll go over those uh, at the end. So 14.2, train 
to recognize social engineering, and we have a list of examples such as phishing, pretexting, and tailgating. Pretext is not related to texting. It's literally a translation of the word pretext, a reason or excuse to hide a real reason for something. Pretexting is basically social engineering, but that having fabricated a story or a scenario to lure the victim to respond. This could be over email, phone, or actual text. And tailgating is following someone through a door or a gate into a secure area without badging in for access. This is a physical security control. 14.3, train authentication best practices. This would include use of strong passwords, not reusing the same password on other accounts, multi-factor authentication, and protecting your credentials. 14.4, train data handling best practices. Not only includes secure storage, transfer, and archiving, and, and destruction of data, but user behavior like clean desk and locking your screen when you're away. We also talk about some physical security protections such as erasing whiteboards or securely storing portable devices and media. 14.5, train on the causes of unintentional data exposures. These are human error issues, like sending email to the wrong person, or losing a portable device or media, or exposing access to data to unauthorized users. The Verizon Data Breach Report noted that 85% of breaches involve human element, as specific and actually has specific sections on malicious errors, social engineering, and lost assets. 14.6, train recognizing and reporting security incidents. This is an important safeguard because the see something, say something model is how incidents are identified a lot. And users should have an easy way to notify, such as a report phishing button on their email client or an email address or a toll-free number to report an incident. 14.7, train how to identify and report if assets are missing, security update. This kind of ties to 14.6 above on notification, but expands to the crowdsourcing for configuration management issues among your users. This is important for stability and compatibility of software assets. 14.8, train on the dangers of connecting to insecure networks. This is not just about using a VPN, but being conscious when entering your password in public and not having sensitive information on your screen while in public. This safeguard become much more important with more users working from home. We talk about securely configuring your home network in a work from home environment, and we refer to keeping modems and Wi-Fi routers patched, changing default passwords on them, and, and setting basic security controls on them. And 14.9, conduct role-specific security training. This is the only implementation group two or three safeguard, and it refers to specific training for higher-risk user groups, such as executives, administrators, developers, legal, finance, contracts, you know, people like that. So let's get that down, and it'll bring up the upfront material, the narrative as we call it. You'll see that the overview is new. We say establish and maintain a security awareness program to influence behavior among the workforce to be security conscious and properly skilled to reduce cybersecurity risk to the enterprise. Well, you thought that was long. It's very different from the version seven one. I'll put the version seven one up here where we talked about the functional roles of identifying specific knowledge skills and ability to support defense of the enterprise and execute integrated plan to assess, identify gaps and remediate through policy, organizational planning, training and awareness programs. Whew, that's even more. It seemed all over the place, so I'm glad we simplified it. But like I said, we used to have some controls related to workforce development, and we kind of got rid of those. And why this is critical, we start by highlighting the importance of end users' role in the success or failure of an organization's security program, because they could be prone to falling for phishing emails, which might affect, infect their system or compromise their credentials. And we say how users unintentionally or unintentionally could cause incidents through errors, losing assets, or using weak or reusing passwords. We talk about users in different roles and levels and having different risk factors. Some handle more sensitive data and are more likely to be targets like finance executive. And we close by saying that training should be updated regularly to be current with new threats and attacks. We put down page two. Uh, for procedures and tools, we remark how training programs shouldn't be a once a year video coupled with some phishing training. We suggest more frequent topical content related to critical risk areas like password selection and use or highlighting phishing campaigns during different times of the year like tax season or holiday season because during the holidays you get a lot of phishing emails about package delivery notifications as an example. Uh, we talk about how training should consider the organization's regulatory requirements, such as for regulated organizations in finance, healthcare, or retail, because these may have special data handling requirements to socialize. And we close by discussing talking about social engineering and phishing training, tailoring phishing to different departments, such as you know business email compromise examples for the finance team. And 
Finally, finally, we list several helpful references to help provide content for your security awareness program. And these include NIST Special Publication 850, InfoSec Awareness Training, the UK's National Cybersecurity Center 10 Steps for User Education, EDUCAUSE, which is a higher education organization, list of awareness campaigns, uh, NCSA's staysafeonline.org, uh, the SANS Training Institute Security Awareness and Training Resources link, and our own cybersecurity, so CIS controls telework and and small office network security guide. So that wraps up Control 14. Hopefully this was helpful to go over the changes between version seven and version eight. If you haven't already, please feel free to go download the controls yourself from um, cissecurity.org. And uh, if you wanna contribute, please sign up for our workbench uh, where you can ask questions or be able to put in some comments on this version and maybe help work on the next version. And that link is in the description below as well. Thank you very much for your attention. Always feel free to leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day. Hey everybody, to go along with the Halloween theme, I meant to get this up right before Halloween, but I'm a few days late. This is another one of our Halloween figures that is a little pumpkin man carrying his own little bag. Have a great day.